Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Sony Pro Audio Files. My name is Andy Munitz, Product Manager for Sony's Professional Audio Division. And in this video, we'll go into the specific operation and features of two of the latest models added to our UWPD wireless microphone series. The two-channel URX S03D slot-in style receiver and the UTX B03HR body pack transmitter. So, if you already have either of these models, or are just looking to learn more about them, this video should give you lots of information on how to simply operate them and perhaps introduce you to some of the features that this product family is known for. So, let's take a look. First up, a quick review of some of the basic features of these third generation UWPD series models. As the most important function of any wireless mic is reliability of signal, the UWPD receivers employ a dual tuner, true diversity design, two discrete tuners per channel, and a circuit that automatically switches to the stronger of the two tuners' signals, greatly protecting against the possibility of dropouts. This means that this receiver actually has a total of four internal tuner sections, providing the highest in wireless transmission stability per channel. By the way, this method of true double tuner diversity reception we feel is superior to antenna-only diversity designs that use only a single tuner but two antennas. The UWPD series is capable of tuning in up to 2,772 channels, covering a wide tuning range of up to 12 UHF TV channels or 72 megahertz and allows for very easy infrared syncing of your receiver and transmitters for finding and setting the best and quietest channel available for each of the two channels for use every time you use it. Something we'll go into further detail about in just a bit. The series also employs digital signal processing or DSP of the audio to ensure great sound and preservation of the transient response of your audio signal. More specifically, the URX S03D receiver also integrates beautifully with Sony's slot-in style of shoulder cams and also allows for a direct digital AES-EBU signal connection directly into the camera, helping to keep the audio signal pure. Each channel's signal strength and audio level status meters are also displayed in the camera's viewfinder. The unit also utilizes a very large and bright backlit display with extensive menu selections for taking advantage of its many capabilities. The other product we'll focus on is the UTX B03HR body pack transmitter, which includes a broadcast style Hiroshi connector for use with our ECM77BC and ECM44BC lavalier microphones. All body pack and plug-on transmitters allow for either mic or line level input selection, and the UTX P03 plug-on transmitter even offers phantom power should you want to use it with a condenser mic. As well, UWPD battery operated units employ useful features such as micro USB connectors for permanent powering or in-unit charging of nickel metal hydride batteries when using a cell phone charger and also have an accurate count-up battery timer. By the way, all UWPD series transmitters and receivers are compatible and even allow for backwards compatibility with Sony's legacy UWP and WL800 series wireless microphone models. Finally, all components are made with metal construction for reliability and field use and have a great Sony fit and finish. Okay, so with that brief overview and introduction, let's dive into the menus of these units and get you up and running quickly. Even though there are quite a few menu selections, we'll start off by showing you the simplest way to search for the best frequencies to use and pair up the transmitters. Once that step is done, you might not normally need to go into the other menus, but it's always a good idea to know what your gear is capable of. By the way, whichever transmitter style you have, body pack, handheld, or plug-on, the menu operation is the same, but in this video, we'll demonstrate on the UTX B03HR body pack transmitter. First up, notice that the body pack transmitter has a power muting button, which you'll need to hold down for about a second to turn the unit on or off. 
also a set button on the left of the display, and plus and minus buttons for scrolling through menus on the right. Holding down the set button briefly chooses that menu for modification, and the set button also locks in your menu choice. On the URX S03D slot in tuner, there are independent channel power switches for each channel, so that only one needs to be powered on if you only need one channel. As well, a brief look at the receiver's display area shows the following. The upper menu button will select between three main sub-menus, Channel Overview and Utility Menu, Receiver Channel 1, and Receiver Channel 2. The Set and Plus Minus buttons will be used for navigating the choices in each of these sub-menus. Also, notice the little round infrared window that is located between the Plus and Minus button. When syncing up a transmitter with each receiver's channel when scanning for a clear channel to use. The transmitter's infrared window needs to initially be facing this small window for them to properly communicate with each other. After powering on both channels of the receiver, the display initially shows an overview of both channels. This screen will show the audio level for each of the signals, the group and channel number, and the vertical signal strength meter for each of the diversity tuners per channel. By the way, we go into more detail on the topics of channels and groups in a separate video that I hope you'll have a chance to look at, entitled UWPD and DWX Wireless Microphone Channels and Groups. But for now, notice that we're currently set to group 00 and are operating within the UHF TV 30 channel and specifically on wireless mic channels 01 and 05 within that much larger UHF TV channel 30's spectrum. For the purposes of this video, and for maybe following along with your own gear, you'll want to be in group 00 on both channels. So, let's investigate the most common setting that you'll need to use most often. How to scan for the best available channels, and how to sync up your transmitters to match. As finding the quietest frequency available at each location you shoot is critical for ensuring your best wireless mic experience, it must be easy to do and remember. First, we'll change the sub-menu to look at only receiver channel 1 by hitting the menu button once. This screen gives us additional information about channel 1, including the actual frequency that is being used, as well as whether the channel is listening to diversity tuner A or B. The fact that it switches often is a good thing, by the way, showing that the dual reception circuits are doing their job. Simply hit the minus button and bring up the auto set menu. Then hold down the set button until the word yes flashes and then hit the set button again to select yes. Channel 1 will start scanning channels for the quietest available frequency, and in about 12 seconds will say sync. If you then hold up the transmitter with its infrared window facing the receivers, the transmitter window will light up and say sync with the word no flashing. On the transmitter, hit either the plus or minus button to change the word to yes, and then hit the transmitter's set button to lock in this choice. This procedure will set the receiver and transmitter to be on the same channel, and the receiver's signal strength meters should now look full and strong. By the way, the first couple of times you try this, the menu system might time out on you, but once familiar with this procedure, it'll become obvious and work fine. If the second receiver channel is needed, then leave the first channel's transmitter on, and repeat the process for channel 2 and its transmitter. Channel 2's receiver will see channel 1's transmitter when scanning and skip over that frequency when it looks for another clear channel to use. This auto set method is by far the easiest and most direct method of setting your wireless channels and once understood will become second nature. Some of the other menus you'll want to know about in the slot and receiver include the following. Band. You see, as mentioned earlier, the UWPD series is capable of operating over a very wide bandwidth of available frequencies, up to 72 MHz or 12 UHF TV channels to be exact. As these units operate within unused UHF TV channels, ranging from TV channel 14 
up through UHF TV 51, you could have one of our packages in either the 14, 30, or 42 range, splitting this large frequency spectrum roughly into thirds. Now, if you have a 30 block system, it means that your system covers UHF TV channels 30 through 41. The band menu that we're now looking at actually splits this range into further thirds, that of 30 to 33, 34 to 36, and 38 to 41. This helps keep full scan times manageable, amongst other things. Changing this band menu selection will determine which specific channel range your receiver will scan and operate in. Next is the clear scan menu, another method of scanning for quiet channels to use. Once selected with the set button, it will flash a plus sign at you, suggesting that by hitting the plus button, you can likewise scroll through available found channels in order of their quality of choice for selection and pairing with the transmitter. This method can show you fairly easily which TV channels are available for use in your particular location and can help in choosing a group to use for a larger multi-channel wireless setup. Sync. This will have the receiver manually send its current channel selection over to the transmitter via the infrared link. Compander mode. Cycling through the options here will allow for receiver compatibility with Sony's legacy UWP or WL800 transmitters. For our purposes here though, make sure it stays on UWPD for both channels. Active Scan is a scanning function that will look for any active UWPD transmitters already in use in a particular group, allowing you to quickly choose to listen in to any of the transmitters in a multi-channel mic setup. Once in this menu, hit the plus button to scan for any transmitters and hit set to select that one or hit the minus button to cancel out of this function. And finally, the squelch menu. Using the squelch function allows you to suppress unwanted signals and noise while waiting for transmissions. Normally set this function to on or to off if you're searching for radio interference or external noise, for example. Now that we've covered most of the receiver's menu choices, let's have a look at the transmitter's display, menu, and operational features. First of all, the UTX B03HR is similar in operation and function to the UTX B03 transmitter that comes standard in our UWP D11 and UWP D16 packages. In this case, though, it has been designed to use a Hiroshi microphone connector designed for robust broadcast field use when used in conjunction with our ECM77BC-9X lavalier mic, for example. Starting at the top left, we see an antenna symbol which confirms active transmission. This is followed by either an L, which represents a 5 milliwatt power setting, or an H for the 30 milliwatt setting. Next is the audio level meter, followed by an indication of whether the unit is set for either mic or line level input. Following that is the bar graph battery indicator. On the next line, we see the group selection that the unit is set to operate in, again a topic that we discuss in a separate video on channels and groups, followed by the specific UHF TV channel and mic channel that the unit is currently set to. And finally, on the bottom line, the actual frequency number of the selected channel. As well, notice the power button, which also can be used as a muting button if hit momentarily. Notice that an orange LED will flash if the unit is set to muting mode. Just hit the power muting button again to release the muting function. Now, before getting into the transmitter menus, Know that there are four specific configuration menus that can only be accessed when the unit is in a special setting mode. In order to access these functions, you must power up the unit while holding down the set button. Menus such as manual group and channel setting mode, frequency block selection, low or high power output setting, and factory reset then become available to change. This special setting mode is so that these critical selections won't be made during active transmission. After making any of these settings, the unit must be either turned off and then on again, or resynced with the receiver to start transmitting again. 
So let's go through the transmitter's menus and have a look. First is audio input attenuation. Adjust this menu to best match a specific microphone to the mic preamp of the unit. I suggest listening carefully while adjusting this to get the best sound quality. Next is the LCF or low cut filter frequency choice. Depending perhaps on wind or background noise conditions, this can be set to off, low 100 Hz, mid 150 Hz, or high 200 Hz filter setting. If setting this filter, don't forget to reset it for subsequent shoots, perhaps under different conditions. Following this menu is the mic or line input selection menu. This can be handy for when getting a feed from a mixing console or other audio device. Very handy for when you actually need it. Up next, we see the time menu. After selecting this menu by holding down the set button, you can then hit the minus button to reset the battery count up timer to zero. Then hit the set button again to store this setting. In other words, every time you put in a fresh set of batteries, be sure to reset this menu to zero. If you use your transmitter for only 2 hours and 43 minutes on today's package, but tomorrow's is only likely to go for about 2-3 to three hours, you don't have to change the batteries. Of course, you'd never really trust your 3-segment battery meter, and you'd instantly change batteries if only a single segment was gone. But now you have an accurate timer that you can trust. After only a couple of sets of batteries, you'll learn that you can get about 8 hours of life out of two double A's. This savings in batteries can really mount up in the course of a year. The next menu allows you to open up the advanced menu, giving access to additional functions that you might want to use occasionally. These include Compander Mode. Cycling through the options here, as with the receiver, will allow for compatibility with Sony's legacy wireless receivers, including past generation UWP and WL800 models. Again, for our purposes here though, make sure it stays set to UWPD. The power lock setting, if set to lock, will prevent turning the unit off unintentionally without an additional menu confirmation. Muting enable, changing this selection to disable will prevent the momentary power switch function from putting the unit into a muting mode. Next is phase. This allows for changing the audio phase of a connected microphone. Following that is a battery choice option, which will allow the unit's battery meter to work correctly depending on the type of battery you choose to use. Type 1 is for alkaline batteries, type 2 is for nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries, and type 3 is for lithium batteries. The contrast menu simply adjusts the display contrast that suits you best. And next, a reset button that will restore the factory default parameters of the transmitter. Finally, the last menu will display the current firmware revision. And again, the last few menu choices are available only when the advanced menu mode is selected. And finally, if you happen to also have the plug-on transmitter, the UTX-P03, the menu choices are the same, except for the option to supply 48 volt phantom power, if you use a condenser style mic that requires phantom power. Well, that's a pretty detailed view into the operation of our latest URX S03D two-channel slot and receiver, and UTX-B03HR body pack transmitter. Realize, though, that even with all of these menu choices, you'll mostly just scan for a clear frequency each time you use the system, sync up the transmitters to match, and you're all good to go. Hopefully, this video has given you insights into the operation of these units and will help make you the master of your wireless mics. As I'm sure you realize, wireless mics can offer real flexibility, but without a solid understanding of both their operation and frequency selection, they might offer a bit less than the best results. And finally, as mentioned earlier, I hope you'll have a chance to look for our video on UWPD and DWX wireless microphone channels and groups to help complete your understanding of your UWPD wireless mic package. For further information on these and other Sony Professional Audio products and various resource downloads, please visit us at sony.com/proaudio. And thanks for watching.